Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are she, she builds, she owns, she invests, she is me, she is you, she is your daughter, your sister. We are on a mission to help 1 million women create generational wealth through real estate investments while fostering personal, professional, and spiritual growth. Of course, we can do this alone, so we are super grateful that you are in a mission with us. And we are super excited for our speaker today. But before we get into all that, let's get into uh, this thing. We are live on Facebook. For those who are watching on Facebook, you can join us on Zoom. So you can ask questions directly to Elena Cardon. Uh, the link is on the comments. So join us. Come over here. And for those who are here in Zoom, smile, turn on your cameras. Everybody wants to see you. Uh, disclaimer, of course, we're not financial advisors. We're not legal advisors. Every investment has a risk. All the investments that we offer are totally passive, but uh, there are just, there, like, just like any other investment, there are risks involved in this. So do your due diligence. Also, all the speakers that we bring offer products and services. We do not endorse any of them. However, we bring them because we believe on what they are doing or their mission uh, that they are uh, pursuing. So she was brought to you by Massive Capital. <laughs> Who is Massive Capital? We are the real estate investment firm that owns and oper operates multifamily deals in Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, and Denver. We also do new construction for retail spaces, and we combine on both kind of assets. We have over half billion dollars of assets under management. What does that mean to you? is that you can totally invest in these assets. You can diversify your portfolio or your retirement account in one of these assets and get all the good returns. If you haven't uh, invested or if you're curious about learning more about that, you can just book a call with any of us and we're more than happy to just share what we know, what we don't know and... Um, just share. Uh, so we are actually a vertically integrated company. We have the education for those who are also looking to start buying their own assets, not just investing passively, but just owning their own properties. We have an education program. Join us, book a call with us, and we are more than happy to take you under our wings. Uh, we do the new construction for metal and wood. Uh, just for the retail side, of course, the development. Uh, we have a brokerage and property management company in-house that only focuses for our triple net assets. And of course, we have our equity team that raises capital for from retail investors that are just like you and I, and also for family office. Uh, so if you want to learn more about what we do, how we can help you, how we have helped Mil thousands at this point of women create wealth through real estate to totally passive join us book a call with us the more we know you the more we can help you uh actually as a matter of fact we have one property open for only accredited investors uh this is in san antonio texas right in the corridor between austin and san antonio just like you know, location is everything on every real estate asset. Uh, we're super excited. We're on the finish line for this property. If you are not accredited or if you're not sure or if you don't know what is that, book a call with any of us. We're more than happy to walk you uh, and just build a relationship with us. All right. Before we get into this, as you know, our speaker tonight is Elena Cardon. So I'm going to start really quick just by sharing a little bit why we love Elena Cardon, how much she has impacted in any of us, and uh, just our journey with her. Just as you know, like she's a mentor of us, 
Uh, so I'm going to start with Candace because Candace is really close to her. She actually invited her tonight. So Candace, tell us the impact that Elena Cardone has had on you. Well, thank you, uh, Jasmine. Um, as I've shared with the, the team, the she team, uh, Elena Cardone is one of my mentors and has just been so inspiring to me as a business owner and someone who just needs some practical advice as a wife and uh, a mother of two boys. Uh, she has brought to me personally through her mentorship and uh, the program that I've been a part of with her and another closely knit group of women, uh, just so much value and so much wealth of knowledge. And, and specifically, one of the things she most recently helped me with in the mentoring uh, program that we're a part of together is with a decision I had with a business partner in one of my other businesses. And so she has just been such an inspiration to me and really uh, a great mentor for me, not only professionally, but personally. So I'm super excited to have her today. Thank you, Candice. If you want to share like one thing that completely changed your life uh, that you learned from Elena so the ladies can learn as well. Yeah, yeah. So one of the, the key things that she really has you do is put together an asset and liability list, um, not just in your tasks and professionally in your business, but also defining your own personal role and the relationships that you have with everyone. So when you think about putting together roles and responsibilities, what might come to mind immediately is your immediate family. You, you put your roles, your responsibilities together. You put together a list of what you think your husband or your partner does. But she actually has you go through that exercise with every single person that you have in your circle. And that was one of the most eye-opening exercises that she had us go through. And it really helped me personally uh, get laser focused on where I spend my time because time is the only thing you never get back. That's awesome. I love that. Um, that's very helpful. Just having, uh, just like, you know, assets and liabilities, it applies with people <laughs> and it identify those. Thank you, Candace. I'm going to go with Maria. Hey, we know that I'm the emotional one of the four of us, so I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> um, I know this is for women, but I love that my husband's here. So a shout out to Nick. Thank Aww. you. Love it. Um, thank you. But um, Elena Cardone was the first one who got me into real estate. I have her book right here and she signed it. Um, yeah, I stalked her until she signed it. So yeah, glad she's not here yet to uh, hear that I stalked her until she signed it. But I wrote down a list of things that I wanted to accomplish and I wanted her to sign it so that I'd actually get them accomplished. And the first thing on my list of things was to have a thousand units as a general partner. And um, two weeks ago, we got in, I hit that thousand mark as a general partner in a thousand units. Mm. From where I came from to starting where I where I did, I mean, guys, I failed math. Like I'm not good at math. And um, coming from a nurse and not knowing anything about real estate to just understanding that you can take control of your finances, you can build your own empire and you can do it from anywhere and any dream that you have from any thought from just a book. So when Jasmine came to the three of us and was like, let's do this, I was like, we're doing it. We're going to take this by storm. And who is our dream person to have on this stage and Elena Cardone was the first person on our list. So the fact that we've come full circle and I could accomplish my dream that she signed through two, two and a half years ago, I'm very proud of myself to be able to share that with all of you today. So I'm going to go cry when I meet myself and I love you all. And thank you for letting me <laughs> share that and, and brag a little bit. And I love you all. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Maria. I love it. Uh, and it's been an amazing journey sharing with you because, I mean, we start, I mean, you started with Massive probably over a year. And all the value that you have brought to us, uh, it's incredible. Maria now, she's, I tell her, like, she's like the umbrella of Massive Capital. Like, she keeps Massive Capital <laughs> functioning across the board. So, uh, Maria, what do you think is, the key factor that helped you achieve those 1,000 units in multifamily real estate for the ladies who are here and see it so far away, like, oh my gosh, I will never, or whatever their goals are, that was your goal to hit 1,000 units in multifamily, but any other goal, why do you think it was the key factor that you learned from Elena Cardone that took you to achieve that? was to never stop um, pushing for my dream and to not let the relationships of other people hold me back. I never let people um, in my life keep me keep me backwards. Um, people in my family who didn't think I could be here and didn't think I would ever be on this stage or doing what I'm doing right now, they're not in my life right now. So just being in surrounding myself with people who believe in me, who trust in me, and who know that these dreams are not crazy, they're not silly, and telling myself that I'm going to own a thousand units is not out of the ballpark for someone like me and someone who's just like all of you on this call. So just surrounding yourselves with people whose dreams are just as scary and audacious as yourself. So I love to just surround myself with people like that, and that's what Elena has taught me. I mean, she built herself an empire one one goal at a time and her dreams were even crazier than mine and I can't wait to achieve all of mine. I love so that. Even, and I, even going bigger. Yes, 10x, right? Right. 10,000 10x. Um and I I think that actually connects with Candace's point, you know, just how important it is to have the right people around you. Because, and even Elena Cardon said on GrowthCon this last year, she said, the older that I am get, the more important is for me to surround myself with women who get it. And that hit, because it's like, nobody understands what we're doing and how we do things. And, you know, we're called like, we're uh, too out there, too ambitious, too whatever, you know, like, People have different perspectives and different ways to call it. But of course, nobody or most people don't get it. So it's that's why I love she. I love, uh, you know, 10x ladies and all these communities that we have built around ourselves that sometimes we feel like throwing the towel many times and we're frustrated and we go through a lot of things to make this, you know, like make Maria for her to hit 1000 units in multifamily she went through a whole roller coaster and you know so proud that she pivoted and she surrounded herself with the right people it's all about connections um thank you maria <laughs> uh brooke you're next tell us <laughs> So I had the pleasure of connecting with Elena during COVID, which was the same time I connected with her husband on a, in an internship. And I was what I was in awe of in, with her was how level headed she was and amidst the chaos. And I remember asking her, hey, you know, I'm working from home. I have two little ones here. I'm trying to homeschool them. And, and I'm trying to cook and clean and I'm married and my husband goes out to the field and, and sometimes he's here and all of these things. I'm like, how, I'm like, I'm going crazy, you know? And she gave me, and she goes, you know what? She goes, one, you need to give yourself grace. She goes, women have so much pressure. She goes to be the provider. And she goes, I used to be so hung up on being the supportive part of grant, you know? And then she goes, I looked up support and realized it means that I'm the base. I'm the solid foundation. 
She goes, it is okay, Brooke, for you to let the balls fall sometimes. She said, so what if you guys are eating cereal and PBJ for dinner? She goes, who cares if you've been in your sweats all day and you have just makeup smeared right here? You're showing up. You're on the calls. You're tired. And to me, somebody who is at a billionaire jet club status and from an outsider's perspective, we see this gorgeous woman that just seems to have it all and have everything together. And not everybody shares some of the, the back end, all the tape holding it together. And during COVID, when she was in her home and that she's telling her kids, hey, hold on a second, you guys, like, hold on, hold on the real side of her and telling us, give yourself grace. And when you can lock yourself in a cabinet, lock yourself in the bathroom, <laughs> like look, go get your mental right. Because we can't help support our family if we're pouring from an empty cup. And the biggest lesson I got from her, she's like, girls, ladies, women, you can't do this alone. You need an army, especially during COVID. And even today she says this, hence the 10 X ladies movement, right? It's okay to ask for help. And during COVID, I really had a mental breakdown. I felt like I still had to keep the house together. And I was homeschooling my kids. And I had a corporate job. And my it, all the things. And my biggest lesson from her is it takes a village. You need to delegate stuff more to your husband. It doesn't mean that you're less than. Give yourself grace. And if it means you have to lock yourself in the bathroom and say, I'm going number two. And you're in there for another you're backed up that's what you do <laughs> so you have your mental space so that's my biggest lesson from her get out of our own way you need an army to be of women that are powerful and on that same wavelength and that it just it takes an army all takes an army and give yourself grace and get out of your own way that's it I love that and it's such a beautiful reminder. I feel like as women, naturally, we give grace to everybody. Partners, business partners, kids, we always give grace to everybody so easily. But when it comes to giving grace to ourselves, like we're so hard on ourselves. And it's like, it's, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but um that's such a beautiful reminder I love it um I love it especially you know because especially everybody here I'm uh who, all the ladies who are here and the guys who are witness of this we are trying so hard to keep our personal professional spiritual lives together that's all about she right grow on every single aspect so of course we have our plates full and when we step out and start looking it's like oh you know what I've been actually doing really good or I do deserve a break or I do deserve this and that so super excited. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, and just like me, I also connected with Elena Cardone for the first time in COVID. Uh, we were in Clubhouse and I had the opportunity to ask her this question, like, how do you deal with barriers? How do you break barriers? For me, being an immigrant has been like a barrier that always had like, you know, heavy uh, weight on me. And she I can't even remember the right words but she totally transformed my heart and you know that's probably when I start going out of my shell and she said uh all the barriers all the labels that you have that's what makes you unique and all the people who are going through the same things that you are going are gonna feel related and they're gonna feel like they can also do it just because you did it. And of course, you know, my barriers are completely different to all of us, but just the fact that I can overcome them and I can share that it's possible, it can impact million, you know, thousands of people out there and it can, you know, we can impact and make a better world. So that was my, that's actually Elena Caron, that's what helped me push and come out of my shell and if I'm not mistaken, she's here. Am I wrong? Yeah, she is. Ooh. 
<laughs> Candace, I'm gonna pass it on to you. She is your guest. Uh, tell us about her, her bio, and uh, back to you, Candace. Well, thank you, Jason. I, I, I am so excited. Um, ah, uh, Candace. <laughs> I, I am so excited. Uh, just to uh introduce uh my mentor. Alina Cardone, uh, just for those of you who don't know her, which I'm pretty sure all of you do, but um, without ado, uh, I'm just going to give you some background about what she's been up to lately. Uh, she's obviously a dynamic speaker and author. She's a mentor, of course. She's dedicated to empowering women and protecting children, restoring the family units. As a co-founder of the Grant Cardone Foundation, she also plays a crucial role in helping underdeserved youth understand financial and business and the economic conditions so they can better their lives. She started a career in Hollywood, achieving success in both TV and film as an actress. And today she's not only a wife, mother, and public speaker, but also a visionary. Elena is the author of the best-selling book, Build an Empire, How to Have It All, and the host of the Elena Cardone Show and podcast. She leads Empire Elite Academy, which is the program that I've been a part of, and a series of four annual masterminds that focus on mindset, money, relationship, health, and manifesting success. Each year, she also executive produces major events, including 10X Ladies, which all four of us will be attending, and we know most of you will be as well. And she draws upon her vast experience uh, and curriculum in the Empire Building Academy. So without further ado, Miss Elena Cardone. Oh, what an incredible welcome. Thank you, Candace. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm like I said, I'm so thrilled that we are able to make this happen. And um, we've we've got some questions that we'd like to ask you and share some of your wisdom that you've shared personally with me and our mentoring program. So uh, we we just have the ladies here today and, and we're going to see if you can help give some of the pearls of wisdom you've given me uh, to the group this afternoon. Oh, yeah, I'd be happy to. And I loved hearing your success story, Jasmine, about overcoming your barriers and using them to be a beacon for other women that, you know, wow, that was really cool. So yeah. I'm glad that you stepped out of your shell to take that responsibility to help others. Thank you. I have to thank you for giving me that advice at that point that I was I had no clarity, uh, especially in my professional life. And, you know, out of that, you know, two years later, you know, massive capital and all this massive action. So thank you, Elena. You had oh. a huge impact on me. Yay! <laughs> so let's just start uh, talking about building an empire. You are the empire builder. Tell us about what is that? Uh, what does that mean to you? Well, it means about really looking at your life and where you want to go and what is the purpose of your life? Why are you here? What is your contribution? Um, what is your vision? And then going about creating that life and vision for yourself, um, for the greater good and purpose, um, for the better on this planet. So that's what an empire builder is in, in, my, in my words and, and in my sort of realm or, or of how I would describe it. An empire builder is one that would look at the greater good of the big picture rather than just the greater good of self. But like, what is the greater good for all involved in making sometimes the tough decisions? you know, stepping out of your comfort zone, even when you don't feel like it or are scared, but willing to do it because it's a greater good that more people learn and benefit from your action of doing that, those types of things. So an empire builder is one that's willing to commit and learn and grow and self-educate and collaborate and figure out how to work together um, to expand because no empire has ever been built by one person alone. It takes a team. It takes a group. It takes 
people. So, so there's so much to unpack in what an empire builder is. It's a mentality. It's a, it's a way of viewing things on such a big grand scale as to equate yourself and have the audacity to equate yourself as the empress or the queen or the king of your empire. And, um, and, and, and what does it take to go out and set upon a, a mission that big? That's great. I know that's one of the things you touch on is mindset and um, how that's really where you need to start uh, is is that mindset piece and, and really spending time on that, the ideas and what you want for yourself. And one of the things that, you know, you've shared with me and in the past was some pivotal moments, write down those pivotal moments, write down what you want things to look at uh, and, and those kinds of things. So can you share with us a pivotal moment in your journey that brought you to putting the program together and how it's significant and what influenced you to approach that leadership and empowerment in, in, building, in building the program? So, what really kind of inspired me was a pivotal moment in 2008 when the economy collapsed and Grant and I had to really look at how we were going to come out of the other end successful. And we weren't where we're at today financially. We had, he had money. I had just kind of come into this relationship. We had been married for four years. He was a multimillionaire at that time. Um, you know, I had never been with anyone that had that level of money before. I never earned that level of money. Um, but we had to really figure out um, how we weren't going to lose it, how we were going to be able to not lose everything. I really had to come into um, coming together on who we are, what are our roles, how are we going to build this? What does this look like? How do we depend on each other? Um, which I never wanted to depend on a man for anything prior to that. Like, how do we come together? What are our goals? What's, you know, I never looked at our goals before it had all, even while I was married, it was always, I only knew my goals. I never even knew how to think about anybody else's goals. Like mine were the most important. It's like, everything's, you know, geared around, do what you love. And yes, I agree with all that. And you, you take care of your own self and self-care and this and that. And so, but but there's also levels to the game. There's, okay, stepping outside of that. Like, of course you have that piece taken care of and handled because you're the most important. There's a reason why they say, put your own oxygen mask on first before you can help others. But yes, provided that that's in for yourself, then how do you go out and be able to take care of the, the other people in your life and help with their goals? And what are your goals together? And how do you support that? And and how do you make the play? Um, so Tell me your question again before I go off on different roads. Yeah, just how you got how you got to um, approaching it and from a leadership perspective to empower women, um, right? And, and got and, to that phase. Yeah, and that pivotal point. Okay, so so yeah, so that was the pivotal point that got me aligned with the husband you know, and really started to work what we did to build, you know, he actually did the building. I did the behind the scenes infrastructure, family foundation building. So we each had our roles and we did that. Um, that was pivotal point number one. Then, then number two is when really another, how I started these programs was Grant did the very first real big stage Grant card, uh, the, the growth con, the 10X growth con. And it was an entrepreneurial event. I knew that I'm not, I never considered myself an entrepreneur. I was always an actress, an artist, like visionary, not good with money business. That's that, that wasn't my jam. I didn't think I'm an entrepreneur. I haven't done a startup, I you know, so he asked me to speak at that and I was conflicted. I was like, you know, you, where you go into invalidation mode of yourself. Well, what do I have to offer? And I have nothing to offer. And I'm just a mom. This is before I've had cognitions, you know? 
I'm just a mom and I don't have anything to offer. And I, what am I going to tell them about entrepreneur stuff? And all this stuff goes in my head of like, oh, I'm not, I'm this, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And then I said, well, I don't know what to talk about. And Grant said, we'll talk about what's true for you. Like, what's your reality? And I was like, well, I'm the behind the scenes. So I crafted my first speech and about how I support him and what we do and how we've made this thing and how we're growing this thing. It's grown a lot in the last 10 years, but that's how I started. And it was him that kind of pushed me out of my head and, you know, just speak about what you know. And so when I did that, it really resonated with a lot of people in the audience. So a, a, a lot of people said I was their favorite speaker at that event because they had never heard that kind of content before. And, and I never knew that was an indicator of things that A, people weren't doing in their relationships and wanted to know more about. And that's kind of where it all evolved. Then we were in a restaurant in New York and Grant was like, you need to write a book. And I balked and I'm like, I'm not smart. I don't write school. Like I was terrible at my book reviews. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm not writing a book. And he was like, oh no, you're writing a book. And it pissed me off. Anyway, I wrote a book. It rehabbed my confidence in self. I was like, oh my God, the smart people write books. I'm a, I must be a smart person. I wrote a book and it's good. So I wrote a book. And so he really kind of pushed me in that area to, to branch out. And, and then I really saw, and there just kept being more and more of a demand and hearing what I had to say. And I felt like what I had to say was important. And I've, I've, I, I've, I'm a certain age now where, you know, I've, I've, I have experience and, and statistics and I'm not like some self-proclaimed, you know, expert trying to make a buck to feel important or get celebrity. Even if I might have had tinges of wanting that in the past, that's just not where I'm at now. Like now it's like a real genuine, I really don't care about fame other than I think I need fame in order to reach more people in order to be heard to ha help women restore their value in themselves. I needed it. You know, it's in us. I had buried it. I needed a little help to recognize and own my power and take responsibility for what I was and wasn't doing and be able to, to, to be able to help others. And then out of that is when I really started to commit and say, I no longer have the luxury of staying unknown. I have, I don't have the luxury of not wanting to, or not thinking I'm great enough and all of this and that it really became, you know what? I, I have data that in the right hands and the right people that want it can make a difference and it can help them. So therefore I owe it to them. Um, to, to do that. So that's how those products came about, which is all those masterminds. 10X Ladies is really an event for ladies to come in, network with each other, support other each other, have each other recognize that there's genuine women out there who want to see the success of you and support you. And I wanted to filter the women that might not have found the Grant Cardone organization, all of his materials because of Maybe he's too abrupt or abrasive or whatever the reason may be that they didn't find him on his own that could open them and help them up to their businesses. And then Cardone Capital, investing and protecting their money. And then stages, how to craft their story to monetize and speak from stages and let their voice be heard and 10X health. And, and, and God knows the list goes on and on, but I really wanted to be a catalyst for women to bring them into our ecosystem because- I'm a fan. I believe in it. I'm a testament to it. And, um, and, and that's really how it evolved from there. Love that. Love that. I, I just love you, Elena. And I love that story. I mean, we've been going to 10X Ladies almost since the first one and so excited for this one, but how do you handle criticism and setbacks in your journey? And what advice would you offer to the woman facing similar challenges? So it's, it's easy um, for me, criticism. Um, I've really done a lot of work. I've, I've really genuinely spent thousands and, and I tell you thousands of hours. I mean, thousands of hours getting to where I am today. Um, Self-educating. I listened to about 36 or be between 30 and 40 
audio books every single year. I listen to all of Grant's books, Natalie, Brandon, Steve Schwartzman, the CEO of Blackstone. I listen to the latest Elon Musk book. I listen to John Maxwell's, all of his content on leadership, all content um, on the 21 irref irrefutable laws of marketing just in this year alone. Plus I do com communication courses. I've done personal values and integrity, how to overcome ups and downs in life, um, how to have a successful marriage. These are courses that I've invested my time, energy, and resources in learning, perfecting, becoming the person that I am today. So when you do that and you have your own confidence, competency, integrity, I'm not perfect. I'm never going to preach perfect. I make mistakes. I will tell you, I have the courage to right my wrongs. That's not always easy. It's not easy to admit you're wrong. It's easy to go into justifications and excuses why you are out integrity or out ethics or whatever. Um, but I have the courage to look at what I've done and how to make it go right. So I know who I am. I have a very strong sense of my ethical moral code. I know my values. I know my purpose. I want to empower women, protect children and restore the family unit on the planet. I live and breathe and eat and sleep that system. Now, having said that, when, when I know who I am and my makeup, when I hear criticism, it does one of two things. Either it just doesn't penetrate because it's not real to me. It's like I hear some criticisms and I'm like, as Grant says, they're, they're in that situation, they're saying more about themselves, what they don't want to confront or lack of willing to do and of what they're doing. It's not about me. It's about they're saying more about themselves. The second time when criticisms get to me and, and you know, I have a personal Achilles heel for, you know, I really proud pride myself on my motherhood. And then I'm a, I'm a really incredible mother. So it's a weakness, right? It's a strength and a weakness because somebody could attack me through that. Now you could catch me at a moment where someone could say, you're, you're a really good mother when you're being a mother and it'll ping me through the heart. And I, and I ridge on that and I get angry and I want to attack somebody for that. But before I do something like that, I look at why did that impinge? Why did that impinge? If you were really doing your job fully, it wouldn't impinge. And when I really am, it doesn't impinge. When it gets to me like that, like I'm taking that example because it's forefront in mind, you know, it's because I look at my life when that criticism leaked in. Why? Because I was out ethics on some degree on motherhood. What is it, Elena? Did you forget to feed the kids? Oh, I could justify it. They're teenagers now. They, they can get their own food. What am I like? You know, I can justify that. But did I feed the kids? Did I have dinner on the table? Did I say, here's the food? You do what you want if you don't want to eat. But I didn't have the food. Or was I on my phone when we were when they were talking to me? Did I get distracted and not give them the attention that they really needed? Did I interrupt their communication cycle to me because I was too busy on my phone? That's not okay. Did I pawn off a responsibility to the nanny or the family assistant or whatever we're calling her now because I wanted to do something else? I need to look at that for myself and own it and take responsibility and put in a policy going forward of how I cannot have that happen to me again. And when I do that and I'm really fully being the role of a mother, understanding what a mother does, what my role as a mother is, not evaluated based on whether they like me or not like me, but what is my role as a mother? To create an environment that allows them to flourish and prosper and become a contributing member of society. Nowhere in that for me and my role does it say, oh, your role based on the mother is whether they like you or not like you. So if that means I have to put in a boundary or, hey, you're coming off of your phone or no, you're putting your phone up and we're having family time, even if I get the eye roll and they don't like, I'm willing to do that because I want the structure. When I'm really doing that, no one can, it doesn't matter what they say, because I know, you know, to your core, who you are and what you are, and critics can't get in. So that's how I look at criticism now. Like, um, I just take responsibility for it. I try not to attack back. Um, the only time I fight back is when someone really threatens me, my husband, my kids, our organization, a staff member, an investor, um, when somebody is spreading egregious lies, um, 
with the intent to harm or damage our company, our business, our character. Yeah, that's no longer a criticism, a personal criticism about me that I take responsibility for. That's that's an enemy that has to be dealt with accordingly, you know, and I will fight back. I will protect my family. I, you know, work very hard to be where I'm at. Again, I want to reiterate, not perfect. I don't, I'm not striving for perfect though. I'm striving to empower women, protect children, restore the family unit. I'm, I'm striving to make a difference for the better, to do the, the most impact I can to make the world better before I die. That's my purpose. I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm, not, I'm never, I'm never going to be perfect and I'm okay with that. Like I'm not going for perfect. I love, I love you're protecting you're protecting the empire you you built and I love that I mean that's straight out of your book yes yes so and this is an excellent excellent segue into my question well one I want to say I'm so grateful to have you on here Elena um being the breadwinner I have actually used your words of being the foundation the support to my wonderful husband David <laughs> and it works so I love it and I love that you were a mother. We are a blended family of four girls. And so this goes into my question. So how do you navigate challenges, juggling a business, uh, your family, along with your own self-care and development? As this is something I struggle on the daily, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this. I would love to hear it. <laughs> you are not alone. Um, it is difficult. And so... I look at my life and I look at, um, you know, where I, I just, you have to be really honest and transparent with yourself. And that's hard to do. It really is. But I have to look at where I'm willing to sacrifice for the greater good of all of us um, to cut out the things that aren't important or aren't, aren't on purpose. And I have to carve out times and time block to make time to do my health, my hormones, um, blood work, my um, my vitamins. I get the intravenous. I also take the supplements. I, I make it a huge priority to have this body sane. And this body for sanity needs the, needs the proper sleep. I need proper hydration. I need to know what's going on with my body. I do precision healthcare. I know which foods I can have, not have, how I process fats, this, that, what my workouts need to be. Um, and because I need everything right with my body. I don't need a body issue making me feel crazy and then me thinking I'm crazy on top of everything else. I have to have everything, like the hormones, the food, the sugar intake. I need, just need to be on top of that. And I know when I go out and I have to just reel it back in. That's when you have to get your ethics in and you have to use discipline and you have to say, I'm off sugar now. Like that's it. For the next month, I'm off sugar. I'm having bad effects from sugar. Doesn't respond well. So anyway, I do that because I have to make myself okay. And then I read, look at like priorities. And for me, um, I'm in a situation where, you know, I don't have to be the breadwinner of the family grant is, and I love that stuff. And I want to bring in and I want to do more, but I recently just reassessed and I just decided um, that I want to start going in another direction, maybe slowing down some of these other outside extracurricular activities that I'm doing in the business to be more at home with the kids, their teens. I know they don't think they need me and that's fine. Um, but they, I, I'm, I need to be there. I'm going to be the Uber. I'm going to be the driver to the tennis lesson, to the this, to the that. And sometimes you, you think as a woman, Oh, but my business is more important or this or that and da, da, da. And, but I think I can put that stuff a little bit on hold because these are very important years. So it's, it's a decision that I am getting to make and I'm trying to work the transition, just being transparent. And I recognize some people could be sitting here going, well, that's easy for her because she has a husband that went and built a business and has a ton of money. And, and you're right. I did. I picked wisely and I worked really hard to help him escalate and get that way. That's not to say anything less of anybody else who didn't or isn't as successful as Grant. 
but there are things that you can do, whether it's wake up early or carve out family time or what can you do with the resources that you have and stop making excuses and, and rework what's most important for you. Um, again, it's, it's don't look at me and go, oh, well, I want that. If you are a single mom and you have to be the breadwinner and you don't have the luxury to not work or to scale back. What I would tell you is have a conversation with your kids and say, hey, we're team Cardone. You fill in your last name. This is what I'm doing. This is my purpose. I do, I'm working with a lady now. We we might do um, the hair extensions. I might joint venture. So I'm gonna use that as an, an as a demo here. Um, you know, hey, look, we, we, my purpose is I want to help women feel beautiful about themselves. How I do that is with the hair product. I'm, I have to be in the salon, da, da, da. I'm doing business to business. I'm doing this. And, and, and I could really use your help and support. So when I'm not here, knowing that you being home, getting your work done, allowing me not to be here, you're actually helping these women feel beautiful for themselves. And you're actually allowing me bring more income into the home. And it doesn't mean that my business is first. It means that the business has to take up my time so that I can take care of this family financially. And I love you. And you're always going to be number one. And, and I want you to know that it might seem like my business is more important, but I promise you, you are always more important. And when you need me, I will drop everything, everything to be with you first. But if you don't absolutely need me, I'm asking for your support to be team, whatever your name is, and allow me to be gone so I can take care of us. Are you okay with that? Do you want to contribute? Are you okay with that role of being okay when I'm not here? And I would get by in and talk to them and make them a contributing family member and that they're appreciated for the support that they're giving you. So it's, it's you, it's your life. It's not my life and what I'm allowed to do. It's what you want to create for your life and how to make your circumstances better. Maybe they get involved. Maybe they help with the extension business. I don't really know what goes on with that. Maybe they're making them, I don't know. Maybe they're calling people back and resetting appointment setting. And, and hey, when we hit to this target, let's go to Disneyland. You know, what is it that you want? Get in communication with your kids. What are your goals? What are your dreams? What do you need help and support with? You know, I'll work extra harder you know, you find out they want to take horseback riding lessons. That's out of your, can't afford it. Okay. Look, if you help me get from a hundred to 200,000, we're going to, I'm going to buy you five lessons or 10 lessons or whatever it is. So there's always ways to um, create the life that you want to have. Love that. Love that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elena. This is being amazing we have a few minutes ladies if somebody has a question this is the time we're going to be respectful of elena's time and while we do that uh just really quick we're going to be in dallas uh for a happy hour on friday and in new york as well so if you are in dallas or new york let us know join us on the 22nd we have our event uh coming up as well for capital raising so seems like we have some questions now uh just please be super brief uh direct to your question uh, let's go with shirley so my question is given that right here we're 85 to 90 percent women what do you think women need to do more or think like in order to take the leap of faith in building their empires and living the life that they want to live? Because we sometimes are a little bit risk adverse versus men. So what what is your uh, perspective on that? First off, thank you for your service. Appreciate you. And um, second, I would say, you know, um, my advice for women is like, just get over your feelings. Feelings are just feelings. Okay. They don't make you who you are. If you feel scared, it doesn't make you scared. I mean, you are not scared. You're a spiritual being or whatever it is that you believe that you are, you know, um, do it anyway, do it scared, do it this, do it that just take action, just do it. Um, stop 
listening to the, the voice in your head that's telling you not to stop listening to your feelings. Oh, I'm scared. I'm going to look stupid. Whatever's going on, just do it anyway. Get used to the rejection. Get used to feeling uncomfortable. Just get used to being told no or flubbing your words, trying to get it out. Just get over that. Just keep taking the actions. And, and before you know it, you're going to start seeing results. It's, it's a, it's a no brainer. It's uh, you're going to start seeing results. You're going to start getting confidence in self and, and, and you're going to be okay with failing because you're going to get humiliated. You're going to get kicked. You're going to feel hurt or whatever. And then you're going to go, okay, well, I'm here. Um, it can't, you know, what's the, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen? I've already felt humiliated. I've already failed at that. I've already this. So why not? But you got to go through that to get to the point of where you're like, oh, who cares? If if you're not already there, you haven't done enough. Just jump in, as Grant says, commit first and figure the rest out later. Like it's okay, you know, as long as you this imposter syndrome thing, as long as you're not claiming to be something you're not, as long as you're not saying an untruth. It's okay to assume the position until you actually own and have the position. Just assume the beingness of that position. Assume the beingness of success. You don't have to be a success. Your bank account can tell you completely the opposite, can tell you the negative, um, you know, financially successful, not in terms of value. But you know what I'm saying? Like you can wear the beingness of success. You don't have to like go buy Ferraris and get yourself in more debt. I'm not talking about that, but just be it, own it, o own the beingness of it and take the action, the do, 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 do. And then you get to have the reward of the actual success and the actual bank account. Uh, so good to meet you. Thank you for the she ladies put this together. My name is Vera Wang Casera. Uh, we are multifamily operators and investors in Dallas, Texas. I got two questions. One, growing up, who was your mentor? Who was your role model? And, and for your girls, your two girls, you're raising two amazing daughters. And how did you do it? You know, what are your top maybe three uh, core values that you enforce in your family culture? So when I was growing up, I never really thought in terms of who am I going to model myself after or study. I think I was just kind of occluded. Like I just didn't even know. But looking back in hindsight, I certainly really respected my mother. I certainly really respected my father. They had a good marriage. They um, So I, I got to see stability. And I was fortunate enough to have that in my life um, where, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it was, you know, there was no cheating, no alcoholism, no drug addiction, no crazy sexual stuff in my family. It was, it was, you know, I felt very safe and secure and grounded. So I think it set a really good example um, for me to emulate in my own family. My parents never fought in front of us. Very, very rarely did they kind of like bicker so I try to model myself after that in my own relationship. Um, the the core values that we have in our family, you know, there's integrity, there's authenticity, transparency, loyalty, kindness, love, forgiveness. You know, those those are really the values. You know, we I never I never expect for the kids to be perfect. I I, I, I tell them, if, if anything, if you come to me where you've done something that you don't feel right about, um, and I've never told you another way, you're not going to get punished or I don't believe in that. We're going to talk about it. We're going to set a parameter and you're going to have a choice of whether you want to go outside of the line or anywhere inside of the line is fine. I, that's your life. I need you to be able to create. I'm not going to be mad at you. There's not going to be, you know, I will never take away or punish you in terms of taking away my love or respect or admiration or any of it. But if you do go outside of the line, I, I'll say this is X, Y, and Z ramifications. It's you, your consequences. I will enforce those consequences, but it doesn't mean I love you any less. And it doesn't even mean I'm going to get mad at you. You know, that's part of life is you make mistakes. 
So you're going to make mistakes. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of how I'm, I'm raising the girls right now. And I've really been extremely impressed with how much they've shared with me and confided in me. I, I never did that. Um, I wish I would have with my parents. I just went to my friends and I think I was misguided and I kind of went down a wrong hole, but I really love, and I'm proud of myself as a mother for that, that I'm, I'm able to take what my parents gave me and it kind of expand and I think make it better um, and safer for them to be able to have the Petri dish to, to make their own decisions and have rewards and consequences or whatever, but I've never, never hit our children. That's, I've never berated them, humiliated them. I wasn't raised that way, not by my parents, but you know, by nursing care and whatever. It was just, it, that's just not healthy and it's, it was damaging. So, so the kids have really had a lot of integrity and self-respect and they've been allowed to make their decisions. Um, I do tell them they have to earn adult rights. Um, they haven't earned all adult rights yet. And so they have to respect. And I tell them cause they, you know, they, they're 12 and 15, but I, you know, they do act like they're 30 and 40 and they make a good argument, but I do tell them, look, I, I am your mother and, um, these are going to be my rules and you get to make your own rules. And, you know, you, you just have to respect me until you earn adult rights and until you earn adult rights, which is you're out of the house and doing your own thing. We're going to, we're going to do my thing and hope that I made the right choice and, and didn't ruin you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, you know, again, we're not perfect. I'm learning God, you know, how we are as, as parents and mothers, it's, you know, I've been really hard on myself. I feel like I failed. I feel like I did some things really kind of wrong, but of course corrected. I feel like I'm back on the right path and, and, um, and it's, and, and, and it's really, really good right now. So you caught me at a really good moment. <laughs> I feel very proud of myself right now. They are amazing. You did a great job. Yeah, Thank your you. daughters are amazing, Elena. You ha you have them speak at the masterminds on occasion, and they're just so amazing. They really are. They really are. They really, you know, I know I'm a biased mom, but they really do, really. They really are are learning a lot on their own, and they're doing the work, and they're really pushing themselves you know, and, and they're just, they make me look good. They really do. They're really, really awesome, awesome girls. We'd love to have them, Elena. We'd love <laughs> to hear them here on the stage. <laughs> well, we can make that happen because yeah. they both originated now that on their own origination, um, that they want to start doing more webinars and interviews because they had a lot of requests for those in the past, but um, until they originated wanting to do them, I just didn't put it on their plate. But um, so yeah, we can, I can, we can ask them, and I could tell them, give them the information, and and see if they have interest. But my guess is that they probably would. It's Natalie Cardona. I love the beautiful hair, Mama. What's your question, babe? How did you, if you like, recall that time of life? Like, how did you focus? on building yourself, your real estate, your career, because you're an actress and and all of that as well. So I'm kind of, I think we all kind of are like that kind of multifaceted, like we're building businesses and wealth and like trying to do it all and self-care at the same time. How do you focus? How do you delegate? How do you prioritize and just like start to build who you are so you attract the right things and people into your life? Well, when I got really clear on my purpose, um, it really helped me to focus and the purpose, my, my purpose with my husband, really figuring out who does what in order to help each other achieve that really started to make my actions more impactful. Um, I, I definitely time block. I, I rate things on priority and importance. And one of the main things, now this could be different than Grant, because I've heard him say, you know, he's in all the lanes and I get it. 
Um, and it works for him and he has to be, I guess, for what he does. My role, I, I stay in my lane. So, cause, cause you got to know your own strengths and weaknesses. Like I can get distracted easily on a number of different things. You know, yourself, I have a big heart. I want to help people. So I know that about myself. So I know that if something comes up that pulls on that particular heart string, I will come off of this person pur purpose to go help this and this and this, and then I've stopped on this and then I got to regroup and reorient. So, so because I know that about myself, I'm now able to stay in my lane. And so my lane is empower women, protect children and restore the family dynamic. I assess things. What are my priorities? If it doesn't fall in one of those three categories and I'm not willing to do it just more than a one-off, then I'm not doing it. I'm not going to the party that doesn't contribute. If, there, if I go to the party, it has a purpose. There's somebody I want to talk to there. There's a collaboration, you know, it, 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 there's, a, there's a dual purpose there. Yes, I might just go do an adventure thing for fun with no strings attached. And I recognize that that's reward time. But most of the times I'm staying in my lane. I'm not going to go do talk about Ukraine or black white things or political well i'm starting to get more political now but i never have before but i believe it, it it addresses family issues and entrepreneurship and stuff like that but i stay in my lane i'm not going to go save the whales i love the whales i love our sea life i'm not going to go you know clean the litter out of um you know the the oceans and the this and the that because I got to leave that up to the people that are going to take responsibility for that and trust that they're going to do their job to clean up that sector of the planet. My role in my sector until it's handled is women, children, and family. And until that's cleaned up, then I can focus on other things. And that's how I do it. And that's how I pick who I'm going to do business with, collaborations with, who I spend my time with, who I hang out with. If they're doing other things, like I love the ocean people. I, I respect the ocean people. I need the ocean people. I, I don't, you know, but I, I can't go off and do that. So I'm, chances are, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go give my funds to that. I'm giving my funds to organizations that are stopping child sex trafficking. I'm giving my money to organizations that are helping the under um, served communities. And you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm rehabilitating families. I'm trying to work on projects that help men and women get along and get on the same page so they can reach heightened levels of success together. Those are, I'm not going to, I can't get involved with Hamas and, 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 and Israel, even though I have an opinion and I, you know, but it's not my, it's not my stance. I have my stance and that's how I stay focused because I can't do everything. I recognize that. That's great. Just, that's great. And I think that's that's <laughs> a very clear way for us to put it succinctly together. And if there's time for just one more question, we have our, our oh, token yes. he, yeah. our token yeah. he of the she. Uh, yes, he behind the he. Dan the Brave. Dan the man. Yes, Dan. We love Dan. Thank you, thank you. Um, glad I can be the token he today. So um, <laughs> my question is a little twofold. So um, my wife and I um, have been together and have been um, all through the Cardone universe and we really appreciate both you and Grant. So thank you, thank you very much for everything that both of you do. But as a male, how long did it take for you and Grant, because you kind of led into it a little bit, get aligned with each other? And then the second question kind of falls into the second question, which is when you and Grant have, as my wife and I call them, skill points in things that you do, how do you decide who does what? Okay. So it took the first four years of our marriage before I got aligned because I was operating as independent, powerful woman, never depend on a man for anything. Then the 2008 crises happened. It forced me to look at, okay, well, who are we together and how are we going to survive this? And I better start depending on a man because my career as an actress was over 
and I was pregnant with our first child. So I better depend on somebody to help me take care of this child, or I got to go get a job or whatever I got to do. So that's when I realized, okay, we're going to join forces. It's not going to be about me and my purpose anymore. It's going to be about us and our purpose. And then I will do what I need to do to take care of myself on my personal goals to help us be stronger together. Um, in all of that, we've had to communicate several times. We've been 20 years together when I wanted to kind of go into this women empowerment movement thing, it terrified him. He's like, what women empowerment movement? He, it had a negative connotation to him. He thought, oh my God, she's going to go do her own thing. We're going to separate. And, and then I had to communicate and say, no, this is what I'm about. And this is what I want. And this is, and then I got buy-in. So there was communication on that. And then, God, there was one other thing you asked me. The last thing, what was yep. the last thing? Oh, how do we when decide you... who does what? Okay, so how we decided who does what is we got real and honest with who is got the stats of the, the track record in the area. And so Grant, I mean, it was easy. I can see how it could be more difficult in other scenarios. But in our scenario, it was really easy. Grant is a businessman. He knows money, figures. I'm terrible with math. I wasn't a business person. I've always been an actress, an artist. I study people. I perceive things. I'm very protective. So it kind of, ours just kind of started to show each other. Okay, Grant's already had success in business. He was already a multimillionaire. I, I wasn't a multimillionaire. Um, he had a proven track record. Okay, you're going to be the boss of the business. We're doing, you have a closer chance of getting us to success than I do in my current situation, which is, a 36 year old actress who was doing all the hot girl roles who is now pregnant and 36 in Hollywood. Okay. Like, like get real with yourself. Okay. Um, and he had a better chance. So I'm like, okay, you're running the business, you're running finances, you're running the investments, properties. You already did real estate. You had success in that. We need to do more of that. You run that division. So now he's the, what we call the IC. He's the in charge or the boss of that division. My role and his support of that is I can give advice or this or that. At the end of the day, find the one you trust and build an empire. I trust him to make the decisions, even if it's contrary to my decision, I have to back and trust him. That's my decision. Even if I ended up being right, I'm not throwing it in his face. Okay, everyone's gonna make a mistake. He doesn't happen to make a lot of mistakes. He's more right than wrong. I got to acknowledge and flow him power for that. Now, for me, I'm really good on the create and the environment and creating comfortable an environment and a safe place, distraction free. So he can focus on the investments without having attention being pulled. Okay. How do I create an environment, distraction free environment? How do I raise the children to be healthy, happy, prosperous children? How do I um, how do I do protection? How do I how do I secure people? How do I how do I artfully make people disappear that shouldn't be in his life? He wants to give everybody second chances. He's so great. This is something you would never think about, Grant, because he's so hard and I'm so nice. No, you got it wrong. Grant's always like wants to forgive and let people back in. And I'm like, no, you're dead. You're dead to me. You're dead. I am so cutthroat. I'm like, you're out. So I have to artfully cut people out of the organization where he doesn't even know that they've been cut out. So I have I have secured allies and people to protect Grant from dangerous people, you know, whatever. And and so, uh, you know, so that, that's that's my role. I'm in charge of family, family activities, fun, protection, who's in our group, who do we hang out with, who do we not hang out with, friends. That's all my division. So, and there's, you know, the other things along the way. I'm the boss of the family. That's got to be hard for Grant. He's used to being the boss of everything. Now he's got to come to me and say, hey, you know, can the kids go have a sleepover? Can they this, they, they, that? Because he's not allowed to bypass me. I don't bypass him at work. He can't bypass me. I run the family, you know? So I'm, you know, I'm the, I'm the executive. He's got to, we're not, we're equal in marriage. We're not equal in business. He's my senior at business. I'm, I, I, I can't go boss people around the office. Grant's the boss. I don't know what I'm fully doing there. Like I got to respect that position. I'm not equal to him in the business. He's not equal to me in the home. So, you know, we work really well because he can give me his ideas or his thoughts or 
his input privately, not in front of the kids. And I can either choose to abide by it or not abide by it. And at the end of the day, it, you know, he's going to allow me to make the mistakes or self course correct or whatever. But at the end of the day, he has to let me make the executive decisions with the family. And so um, it helps us in our role because it's helped us be an incredible family because I'm working really hard to be really excellent in that role as a mother and as the, the, the matriarch of the family. And he's working really hard in the business and he's doing a phenomenal job. And together, us as a unit makes us so unique and so different from, you know, I don't know if you want to call it competition. I'm not in competition, but certainly his company could, you could see how others would be in competition with him, but, you know, but they really can't touch us because who's got it all? Ray Cardone has it all. He's got the money, the success, the proven success, the people that have success. He's got the successful, happy wife, children, and all of that takes work. And it takes a whole component agreements between me and Grant, our agreements to allow each other to flourish and prosper in our roles and recognize them of equal importance and value, not money-wise, he makes all the money. He makes way more money. I, I didn't go build businesses that made a billion. He did that. But it's equally as important that he has his family because then what is it all for if he doesn't have his family? So that's what we decided works for us is this is where we want to be. We want to be model role couple. We want to be a model family. Not perfect. Not perfect. But a model. So it forces us to hold each other accountable to constantly be working our agreements and working on ourselves to be the best, to set an example, to inspire other couples, relationships, foundations, families to do the same, to spread more good, to restore the value of the family and each other and man and woman working together on this planet. It can work, it will work, it's not easy, it can be easy. You know, I don't wanna put it there that it's hard either. It doesn't have to be, but you are fighting against a group of people in a society that says it's okay to, to be out of communication with your partner. And you are fighting a community. You have to confront evil. You are fighting uh, a, an environment out there that is trying to separate your children from the parents. And you are, sep you are fighting a group of people out there that are saying it's okay to have a divorce. And I'm not saying it's not okay to have a divorce. Definitely don't be in staying in an abusive relationship but it shouldn't be that easy to get one just at the first realm of something not working out or this or that it's a lot more divorces are happen happening that didn't need to happen where it could have been restored with the right information and the right willingness to work at things is all I'm saying. So I, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to help other families through the hard times, through the thick and the thin. And, and, you know, I'm not saying that we're perfect or we figured it out, but 4th of July, we will have been married 20 years. Yeah. And congratulations. That is so awesome. And Elena, you are helping couples. You, you've helped me in my marriage because while I've been going through the, the program with you, uh, my husband and I have worked on, all of the things you've shared with me and it's just been a blessing and thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your time. I know Erica said, you got to go, you've got another appointment. I wish we could get to more questions. You've been so generous with your time. We love you. Thank you so much for sharing the afternoon with us. And we're going to see you at the 10 X ladies in August. Thank you. Elena. Thank you, thank you so you. much. Thank you, She You're Network, for having Goodbye. me on and uh, all the thank questions. You. And thanks, Dan, and all the other women and maybe men that are on this that I don't see you. Thank you for um, trusting me with your audience and having me on. It's really been fun for me. Thank you. Thank you for your thank success. You. Thank you for your successes. And thank you for those acknowledgments. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a spiritual deposit in my spiritual bank account. When y'all tell me that it really does make a difference. And it really, it really, you know, reaffirms that 
everything that we go through, all the challenges, it, it really is making a difference and helping. So thank you. I wouldn't be successful if y'all aren't successful. So thank you for all of your successes. Really, really, really thank you. Okay. Bye everybody. Hey, thank you, Elena. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you everyone. Thank you. <laughs>